Education and developing a scientific temperament in children has always been at the core of Sanatan Dharma. Right from the creation of Brahmanda to Manu to Aryabhatta to Sushruta to Ramanu and even to the present day generation, which has very elegantly blended the modern education into the, modern, the core teachings of Sanatan Dharma. Our Puranas proclaim Aneka Sanjayu Chidi Paroksha Atasya Darshakam Sarvasya Lochanam Shastram Yasya Nastanya Evasa. It means knowledge is the true eye of everyone. It clears the doubts and helps us to see what is not obvious. A person who lacks this eye is truly blind. Taking this glorious tradition forward, HSS Balagopulam Frankfurt is hosting this science show by the Balagopulam kids. Please give them a big hand. Nurturing scientific talent in the kids does not require any age. We have a very young kid. A very young scientist. I'm sorry, I use the word kid. Okay, she is not kidding here. She is teaching you science. Okay, can you tell me your name? My name is Jushita. How old are you, Beta? I'm four years old. And what are you going to tell me? Show me. The floating eggs. Floating eggs. Eggs don't float. So you can do magic? Yeah. Ah, okay. But behind every magic, remember there is some science. And this kid here, sorry, the young scientist Joshita is going to explain us. Joshita, can you please go ahead? Do. Okay. What do you require for this? I need salt. Okay. And I need some glasses. Okay. Water. Okay. And also eggs. Okay. Go ahead. First, I get I get one egg, drop it in the normal water. Then the egg will sink. Yes, it's not floating, it's sinking. Can you move the same stick? Then I'll get some soft water. Okay. And I'll draw the egg and the egg is floating. Oh, it's floating, really? You did what you told them. Okay, tell me how did you do this magic? Because salt and water is denser than normal water. Lovely! Very good. Very good. And what is this real third jar for? I'll draw the egg. And I pour some normal water. Okay, pour some normal water. So you are pouring normal water in salt water again. Okay, can I help you? I'll help you. Oh, okay. Yeah. And now the egg is floating on top of salt water. Yes, I can see that. This salt, this egg is floating on top of salt water, but there is some more fresh water on top of the egg. Okay, lovely. So, so be careful while you're swimming in swimming pool. <laughs> ah, see, this is a practical usage for whatever she says. So, in oceans there is salt, but in swimming pools there is no salt. So. <laughs> Don't think that your body will go on what you call floating onto the swimming pool. Thank you so much, Roshita. Can we have a big round of applause for the young scientist? And remember, she's only four years old. What is the next magic you are going to do? Introduce yourself, please. My 
My name is Hani Mead. I'm seven years old. I'm in the second grade at Obermaya School in Wiesbaden. Today I'm going to do an experiment about salt and pepper. The things that are required for this experiment are salt, pepper, wool, honey, and a plate. This is a very curious mix of salt, pepper, wool, balloon, and plate. Okay, let us go ahead. First, I'm going to put two scoops of salt on the plate. Okay. Now, I'm going to take one spoon of pepper and put it on the plate. Okay, so, go ahead. Now, I'm going to mix the thoroughly. So, you're mixing the salt and pepper thoroughly, very good, okay? Okay, no problem. Please be patient, you're mixing the ingredients. Now, you can see that they are mixed and it's hard to separate them. Ah, you are talking of separating them, it is impossible. But I have a trick to do it. Wow, oh. so you can make tricks with science, lovely, great, go ahead please. Now, I am going to take the balloon and rub it a few times on the balloon. I can help you with this. Sometimes our, our young scientists are so small they need a little bit of helping hand from the parents. And a brother also. <laughs> now I'm going to put it about a spoon. I can see the pepper jumping. You can see that the pepper is thick, pepper powder is thick at the balloon. Yes, that's so much. There is a salt. It's not just thin and the plate. It's still on the plate. Why yes. so? This is because this is because the balloon has balloon has negative charge and the salt and pepper have positive charge. Negative and positive charges get attracted. But why not salt? It has also positive charge. It is because salt is heavier than the pepper powder. And salt cannot overcome the force of gravity. So lovely. See, even though they are of the same charge, but they are attracted to the balloon, but still the salt remains in the plate and the pepper goes onto the balloon. Lovely. And that is because salt is heavier than pepper. That's great. Thank you so much, Harry. Thank you. Now there is superstition throughout the world. And people make fool of people using this superstition. And this is a big problem. So, what can be used to eradicate superstition? Scientific knowledge. So, I heard long time back, some people told me that India is so hot because you people are not praying to the true gods. And Germany is so cold. Why? Because you are praying to false gods. You are praying to, you are not praying at all. So, we should start praying and set the temperature to AC conditions throughout the world. But then, our young scientist here, Shishan, he has cleared the superstition saying that no, this is not so and he is going to explain you why India is hot and Germany is cold. Okay. Introduce yourself, please. I will hold the mic, no problem. Yeah. Hello, my name is Shishan Madani. I am in second grade. Uh, I go to Metropolitan School for free. Today I am going to explain why India is hot and why Germany is cold. For this I will make mm -hmm. one globe and one oh, light bulb and one orbit or a jack. Our Earth gets all the heat so and energy water. from the sun. From the sun. Our Earth is in round in shape. I am not sure if I am going to go back. I am going to move around the sun. The middle of the Earth is called the equator. The up and the down are called the poles. India is and the center is first directly in, on the middle. And then and India is near to the near to the equator. That's why India is hot. But but the sun rays fall in a slanting way at Germany and this much more density. 
Estadion is much more than, than India. One more thing. Earth put around the sun in an oval shape that. When Earth is near to the sun, it is winter. Near to the sun, it is summer. When it is far from the sun, it is winter. Earth also rotates. So when uh, in Germany is facing towards the sun, it is it is summer daytime in Germany. When it is facing away from the sun, it is night. Lovely. So next time I remember somebody tells you that all oh, is going about the God and all, tell them that Earth rotates from the sun. Talk about the light coming from sun. Okay, that's it. Once again, I love that. Sorry. Yes, Prada, can you please introduce yourself? Hello, my name is Prada. I am a years old and I go to Shoulder International School. Today I'm going to talk about why is the sky blue at noon? <laughs> So, in this chart, I sh I'm showing the sun, earth, its atmosphere, lots of particles in earth's atmosphere, a little man standing on earth looking towards the sun, and the sun ray. Sun ray looks white in color, but actually it consists of all of the colors, such as Violet, green, blue, yellow, orange, and red. These colors go through the atmosphere to reach our eyes. But in the atmosphere, there are lots of particles. These particles make the light bounce. The particle size is that blue light gets scattered the most. And that's why it, the sky looks blue. Not only it gets scattered both, it gets scattered through the whole sky. But when we look towards the sun, it will look white and yellow in color. Because the blue light already got scattered. Then why is the sun red during sunset? Earth has been taken and that means that sun Lovely. So there is a scientific reasoning behind the cosmic dance of colors. You know why the earth is blue and why, uh, why the sky looks blue and why the sky looks red during different times of And can you show me something? What is this? What is this? Can you tell me what it is? This is a box which is gonna prove you that white light actually consists of all of the colors. Here I have a torchlight and this torchlight you could consider as the sun. Here I have a prism. And the white light from the torchlight hits the prism. When it hits the prism, the prism will split the white light and it will make the impression of the colors of a rainbow. Please give them a big hand. So next time somebody tells you when you see a rainbow, don't run to the end of the rainbow thinking there is a pot of gold behind it. Our young scientist has told us why the rainbow is formed now. Lovely. Thank you, Pranav. Thank you. So also helps you to understand what is happening in the nature. Okay. In me, Shaili. Introduce yourself first. My name is Shaili Purnada and my name is Anand and I'm studying with Today I'm going to explain you about the water cycle. Water. We have 70% water on the earth and remaining 30% is land. We have four stages in water cycle. 
evaporation, condensation, precipitation, and flow. Evaporation is when the water gets heated by the by the sun and see here evaporation is happening. Yeah. Good. Good. Okay. Go see condensation. Condensation is when the vapor forms into water droplets and forms into a cloud. Precipitation is when the water droplets come together and the and the cloud gets heavier and the water droplets fall as rain. Flow. Flow is when the rain flows into the sea, into lakes or into rivers and some of the rain flows into the ground as groundwater. The groundwater will be feeded for the plants. This groundwater will go again to the sea, to the lakes or to the river. This cycle will continue and continue. One important thing for everyone, don't waste water, use water wisely. Lovely, great. So you know we can have the water, how we get water, how we can it go, it evaporates and how it comes back to earth. So thank you, Shiny. Thank you so much. And now our next young scientist, Neil Sapanta. He is going to tell us. Just now Shailin spoke about the water cycle. And now, and she ended it by saying that do not waste water. Our young scientist Neil is going to tell us how to do that, how not to waste water. Yes, Neil, can you introduce yourself, please? Hello, hello, my name is Neil. I'm seven years old. My name is Neil. Lovely. So, our young scientist has shown us the way how not to waste water, how to reuse the water, and ultimately it leads to saving Mother Earth. Right? Thank you so much, Neil. A big hand, round of applause for Neil, please. Ah, lot of knowledge, yes. But we have some young scientists here who knows how to make fun out of science. So, Raghavan, introduce yourself and then we want to talk to you. Introduce yourself. Hello. My name, My name is Raghavan. I am, I am seven years old and I go to open my school. Do you want to see a tornado in a bottle? Tornado in a bottle. Who wants to see a tornado in a bottle? Me, me, me. So many, you have a lot of points. Yes, please. Okay, here's the bottle. Do you see any tornado? No, because the water is down the air is up. There is no tornado in this bottle. Please go ahead. Show me. The air can carry the water up. So that's why the tornadoes are coming. So we turn it. Shall I? I can help you. Yes. Ooh. Okay. And do what? No tornado because the air is blocking the water. Should we shake a little bit? Okay, I can shake it. Oh. There is a tornado. Can you see people? Oh if you can see, please a round of applause. They both meet each other in the center. The center is called vortex. So that's how we form a tornado in the bottom. For that, for that I use two bottles, one connected with the whole movie. And this happens in here, in Canada and America. Thank you for watching. And thank you for watching. Okay, Shreeza, 
Please introduce yourself. I am Shrinita Srinivasan. I am eight years old and I study in International School of Frankfurt. Today I'm going to talk about magnets. Magnet, a magnet is a very special metal that can attract other objects. All magnets have two poles. All magnets have two poles, the north pole and the south pole. Okay, here you are showing the south in red, uh, north in red color and south in blue color. Okay. Opposite poles can attract and light poles repel. And it's so amazing to know that the earth itself is a huge magnet. Oh, the earth itself is a huge magnet. Lovely, go ahead. And that's how we can find our directions using a compass. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Can you show? A compass, a compass has a magnetic needle. The magnetic needle also has a north pole and a south pole. The south pole of the magnetic needle gets attracted to the north pole of the earth. North pole gets attracted to the south pole of the earth. Mm -hmm. Okay, lovely. That's great. And but what are these things here? You have many things here. Are these also what? What are these things here? This is a, this is a compass magnet. Okay. If you don't have a compass, you can also use this like a compass. All you need is like a string to fold it, and then you need another compass. Then this will spin, and then you can see the direction, just so, like a real compass. So next time you get lost, always keep this compass magnet with you, even if you don't have a compass. Good. Go ahead. And there are three different types of magnets. The horseshoe magnet, the round magnet, and the bar magnet. But tell me one thing, I can't understand. See, this is dancing, this is not going, this is against the gravity. What is happening here? Here, it's like south pole and south pole. Say, so they repel. But when, it, when I take it and turn it around, it's south pole and north pole. So they attract. Cool! Lovely. Great. So you are making fun using the magnetism. Lovely. Great. Thank you so much, Rita. Thank you. Yeah, I can. My name is Okay. I am 9 years old. I am studying 4th class in the Obermeyer International School. Today I am going to show you a thirsty candle experiment. Can a candle be thirsty? Not really. I am going to show you how a candle can be thirsty. Candle thirsty. You mean to say the candle wants to drink water? Now they let us see what you can do. Go ahead. So this experiment I need a lighter, a candle, Little water, a glass, and a bowl. First, I need to pour some water in the bowl. Then, I need to yeah. then I need to place the candle in the bowl. Then I need to light the candle. So you have poured water in the bowl and you have kept a candle on that and it seems okay, it's not floating or it's not doing anything. Okay, fine. Go ahead. Let it come. Let it come. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Then I need to place the glass over the candle. Look what happened. Okay. It looks Oh. I see that the water is rushing into the jar. Yes, the water is rushing into the jar and the candle is lifting. What's happening? What's happening? It looks like, and it looks like the candle is dirty and it's drinking water. So what happened? The candle is off and the water lines up. Why is the candle off? The candle uses oxygen to burn. When the can when we place the glass over it, it uses all the oxygen inside the glass fast. When the oxygen is finished, yeah, yeah, you can talk. It uses oxygen. Uh, when the oxygen is finished, the candle stops burning. Why does 
water rides. When we cover the can with the glass, the air inside the glass heats up. The, the pressure difference between the inside and the outside of the glass it causes to um, causes the water to rise. It rises to the pressure inside of the glass is equal to the pressure outside of the glass. Did you know the same thing happens when you suck water to a straw? Lovely. So there are two things. One is you learned how the water got sucked into the jar because it was no magic done by Hasini. It was no abracadabra done by her. There is always a scientific reasoning behind something unexpected happening. So thank you so much, Hasini. A big round, please. Okay, now for the good stuff. So, our new young scientist. What's your name? Introduce yourself, please. Hello. Hello, my name is Kaika Deva. I am 10 years old. I study in fifth class at Gymnasium B. My project is a dry ice balloon class. But uh, first, I try uh, the uh, dry ice project with. Uh, uh, with just wa a hot water, without a balloon. So you can see the gas. So this is what? This is dry ice. Yes. Okay. It's uh, minus 70 uh, degrees. It's been very cold. So it's a small piece. Small piece. That's what I'm saying when I say now. The, uh, the gas, uh, the dry ice will directly sublimate into gas. So, dry ice was solid and you are saying it's turning into gas. How can that be? Um, because of the sublimation, because of the uh, um, because of the pressure, uh, um, the water and O2, um, the dry ice will burst. Um, oh into gas, and it will come because of the pressure out. Now again, people, there is one thing to be observed here. She put a solid dry ice piece into liquid gas, and suddenly gas uh, into liquid water. Suddenly gas started coming out. She is not doing any magic. It, there is a scientific reason behind it, and she knows it. She says that when a solid turns into gas, immediately without getting into a liquid state, it is called sublimation. Yes? Yes. Okay. Now what else? What else? We have many now, things here. What are you going to do? I will uh, do the same thing just with the button. So now give I, it up. Speak into the mic. I need um, hot water Don't cover them, please. Okay, you can take this one. This is hot. It works, it works with water. I will help you with that. <laughs> Full? Yeah. Out. Yeah. You tell me when to stop. Stop. Sorry. Okay. So, um, now I will put the dry ice again in the... Okay. Okay. Now I will put the dry ice again in the... Oh my gosh! I'm it's going, going to give you both hands. It's going to palm, palm. Alright, shall I put it? Shall I put it? You hold it. That's my, that's my sister. And my friend, yes. Okay, sorry. Oh my gosh, it's good. Hold it, Dad. It's going to explode. It will. It will. She's my friend. Ooh. She's my the friend. Yes, um, the balloon is filling with uh, gas and when there is too much pressure, the balloon will burst. Okay, because the gas will come out as long as the solid thing solid dissolves. Yeah. So, if it, there is a lot of pressure built up and the balloon can't burst, it will burst. Lovely. Great. It's my junior. Great. So, a big round of applause for Kai Kadena. Thank you, Kai. It was beautiful and it was really informative. Thank you so much. Can I start? Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, now, we have to get scientists. Why should I? Can you please introduce yourself and tell us what you are going to do? Now, I am Kai Kadena. I am 
which acts like a friend, like it to pitch us with you or it to play music with instruments and so on. Now comes the big question. Dear Manasayan scientist, have you made a robot to help your mom? Yet? <laughs> Maybe in the future. She is there, no? She is there, no? She is the robot. She is the robot. She's gonna help. And a big, big round of applause for Manasa, please. Thank you, Manasa. A spoon, a raisin, and a glass. Raisins are not raisins. How can they dance? I'll show you. Lovely. Go ahead, please. Can I help you? I will help you. Okay. First, we pour some soda water into the glass. Make sure it's nice and full. Lovely. Go ahead, please. Now we put the raisin inside the glass. Then we take some salt. See the reason. Then we just put the salt in, and a little while later, it will start to dance. It will go up and down, up and down. A little bit of patience for entertainment. It's not every day that you see a reason dancing, yeah? <laughs> okay. I can see the reason lifting a little bit, but I will fall in back. It's not coming to the top of the glass, but still I can see it rising a little bit. Can you tell me why is it rising, not sleeping, not still hiding there? It's rising because the bubbles have some carbon dioxide inside them, which latches onto the raisins and lifts it up. And it then comes down because what happens is that the bubbles with the carbon dioxide inside them, the bubbles pop because the bubbles combine with the oxygen which makes it pop and come down and repeat and repeat and repeat. Thank you. Lovely. So we can make a raising dance because it is being lifted by the air bubbles. Yes. Great. Thank you so much Adi. A round of applause please for our young scientist who is in a very colorful t-shirt today. Ah, we have a very, very cute young scientist. How old are you? What do you think? My name is Vara and uh, my name is Vara Krishna. I'm six years old. She's just six years old. Please, a round of applause for her ages. I go to the German school called Ludwig River School. Today, I'm going to show you how to make some plastic fishes swim. Have you ever seen plastic fishes swimming? I have not seen it. Okay, please show it. How do you make plastic fishes swim? Yeah, go ahead. First, I take a, I take a plastic fish. Okay. You can come here. We need a little bit of help from And then a, I will help her for the scientist. And then I take some camphor and press it on the tail of the fish. So you are pressing camphor on the tail of the fish. Camphor, are they karpoo which we normally say in the everyday life? Yes, I can see the fish is moving from its place. Right. And it starts slowly to move because of the surface tension. Because of the surface tension. I thought you were adding camphor with some magic words in that. No. Good. And
then the water near the camphor and she goes to birds in the camphor and the camphor also slowly dissolves then it starts to swim Yes, I can see that the green fish is moving faster because I think the camphor has started dissolving faster. As you say, it is taking a little bit of time to start. I can see the red fish now starting to move and the blue one also. Lovely, tell me what white happens. Because of what? Because of what? Because it wants air and less surface Lovely. So, somebody tries to fool you by making some inanimate things, say that oh. I can make this inanimate thing sweet in water. You can direct those people to our young scientist Swaraja. She knows how to fix them, fix their lives. A great big round of applause for Swaraja, please. Thank you, Swara. Very good. Now that brings us to the end of our science show. Um, thank you so much for being a lovely audience. And you can see we can learn many things with science. And even the kids can show us many things, which we think are just magical. There's nothing like magic. There's always a scientific reasoning behind it. A big round of applause for all the kids. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you.